and welcome back to the second part of the Italeri 132nd scale Maki for Gore build. Now this is going to be focusing on the cockpit, solely on the cockpit. There is nothing really else that I will show off. I think it's uh, well pretty extensive by in itself. So as I said before, it, I didn't know if it's going to be a two or a three parter this whole build, but apparently it looks like it's going to be a three part one. Well, let's get right into it then, shall we? Whilst I'm cutting off some of these parts from the sprue, I should say that, well, sorry for being a bit late. I, I had two main reasons to be late, really. One was that, that I started to use a new video editor because the one that I've been using I really didn't like. The second one was that I played a lot of Starfield in the last couple of days, so, so that took up a little bit of a time, shall we say. But instead of finding excuses, let's focus on the build. As you can see now, I am assembling the instrument panel by gluing in these two levers. I should leave a bit of a hindsight knowledge here. Leave these levers for the end. Have them separate, paint them up, etc, etc. And when you have all the 3D decals and everything in place on the instrument panel itself, then glue them in because it just makes the life later on a tiny bit difficult but this is not the part that is the worst offender so to speak this tiny photo ash lever you can put it on safely and you should because it's quite small don't forget to put your finger on it Pew! too late but at least the corporate monster didn't get a nice meal that day. Now comes the gun sight part. This little fellow was a pain in the bum. And again, in hindsight, leave this until the end. And once you are seeming faffing around with all these tiny little P parts, I will give you an update that currently, at this point in time, when I'm editing this video where I'm at with the build, and I should say that I'm almost done finishing building the whole plane and get it ready for painting. My two biggest problems right now that I'm facing is whether what to do with the lackluster outside of the, of the plane. Should I jump in and potentially ruin a 100 euro kit with bad riveting detail? And the second one is whether I should try to hand paint the cockpit or try to make some masking for it because Italy missed the mark on that one and they don't really provide masking for your canopies which is a stupid thing to do for a hundred euro kit. But this is still just a problem that future me needs to tackle at some point. You might have also noticed a bit of a sing mark in the middle of the instrument panel. And yeah, you might want to address that. And with this last gluing in, the instrument panel is complete. But yeah, those middle parts, you might want to wait with them until the end. And here we have some lovely ejector pin marks. Too bad they are not the actual part of the plane. Would have been surprising to have World War II planes with ejector pink marks on them really. But apparently the Italians did something very differently back in the day. To be fair, these ones aren't even the worst offenders at this point. The 
Don't forget to put your finger on it again. Pew! Too late. Some people just never learn, apparently. And I'm one of them. Oh no, look! He managed to put his finger on it. Well done, boy. Well done. Now see, this is another thing. I think these parts could have been made out of plastic easily. And it would have been much better. Now you have a big PE sheet which you don't know how much it should bend because if you look at reference photos it should bend so I just roughly eyeballed it. Here comes another hindsight tip. Don't glue these parts together right now. It is going to be much easier to assemble things. Paint and assemble things separately. But to tell you why I actually did it is that I wanted to make sure that when I glue those two PE parts on there, where the uh, uh, rudder pedals are, that they are not going to be uh, in the way of this frame. That's why I assembled it. But I think you can get away just temporarily putting it on there and then when you have the PE sheets in place just take it off. Now comes the fun part again, gluing PE sheets by eyeballing it because there is no exact measurements, placements or pins, holes, whatever to help you guide this. Also these two panels or plates or whatever you would call them don't have enough detail. If you would look at reference images you would see that these should have some um, rivet detail in the middle. Probably the rivets that uh, hold these things in place. Now I think in, in the current day and age these things could have been done much better with plastic molding. But to be fair, it's not too shabby, to say the least. Now this is another tiny detail that you have to be very careful with. These are the belts for the rudder pedals. And yeah, I don't think that they are perfect either in terms of the looks. Uh, because uh, the two parts of the belt uh, really don't overlap as, you know, they do in real life when you buckle them together. And here is another of my favorite pastimes, removing seam lines. Make sure you go through all these tiny holes and clean them out thoroughly because there is a lot of extra plastic in there. So here you can see me using my Revel precision scraper to get out most of it and then afterwards I use some Tammy Extra Fania to melt away the leftovers. Also these elongated holes have some plastic on them so use an exacto knife with a nice fresh blade to get out the excess.
cleaning, 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 and some more cleaning. I start to feel like a janitor at this point. So these frames are underneath the pilot seat. So these pins are quite big compared to the hole that, which is not there. Uh, so what I did is that I sanded them back a bit. I quite started to like to use Bluetech as a nice holder for small parts whilst I'm doing something with them. It makes it easier, I guess, than using uh, tweezers or clips. But you want to make sure that the glue doesn't touch the blue tag because it is going to make a bit of a mess. Well, not that big of a problem, but still. This frame is also could have benefited from a bit more blockator pins and slits and well stuff like that although i should say it's not the end of the world it's quite simple to put together it's just a bit finicky to to uh, make the parts align proper and not be twisted in the end This is the moment of truth, let's see if I've done everything correctly and it's not a mangled mess and it looks like it's fitting okay. Again, a bit of a Captain Hindsight moment here, you don't want to glue this here right away in, I would have done it separately with the chair together and then glue the whole thing in after everything is painted. You might notice a bit of a sink mark on that handle, uh, but I was like, eh, I don't care. It's too small and it's going to be painted black, so not much is going to be visible of that. Now this part is going to be a fun one, because when I have cut it off, I really didn't see any locator pin on the bottom there, so I don't know if it was just me being stupid and cutting the locator pin away as well, but I am fairly certain it didn't have any. So yeah, so you can see me there with that hole fiddling around, putting in the uh, cement, and yeah. It's just, oh my god, this kit is horrible. <laughs> anyway, the moral of the story is that make sure that you, you're you not going to cut off any locator pins or whatsoever, like I did. But again, I'm sure that it didn't have any.
another massive ejector pin mark there uh, which needs the attention of some sprue goo And whilst we are talking about ejector pin marks, look at this mess. This is the left side of the cockpit. And yeah, if you haven't noticed already, there is that abomination there. That should be like a nice box. And it's not. It's a big gaping hole. And whilst we are complaining, look at this mess. This is a tiny part with three levers and knobs or whatnot. Uh, that goes on the side panel look how ugly it is look at that massive seam line and it's just it's it's really bad molding this kind of small detail on other kits looks way nicer so again janitor time clean up on aisle 5 here I really recommend you using a nice fresh exacto knife blade so you're not going to put too much force on things and accidentally cut off one of the knobs so yeah just take your time and scrape 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 After all that scraping and getting rid of the excess plastic, I used Temi Extra Fine Cement to, to clean up the surface and make it nice and smooth. Oh good, another tiny PE part. But let's get credit where credit is due. At least for some of these small PE parts, they give some extras. Like here you have two of these. This really does give a peace of mind when it comes to carpet monster accidents. These are the landing gear and the flap controls. Luckily these were quite nicely molded and there weren't too many seam lines to take care of. Oh, and by the way, I almost forgot to take care of this little ejector pin mark here as well. And, of course, we have the other side of the cockpit. Really bad. You can see that I've already taken care of one, but there is this other one, which, again, it's in the worst position imaginable. Although now it's a bit blurry, but let's hope it's going to get better soon. Wait for it. Come on, man. Finish the gluing. And here you go. See? It's right next to a knob. That's, that's ridiculous. And it's time for the final stretch. Assembling all the cockpit walls. And I don't know. I should say it's a, it's a decent cockpit, but you can see that there are problems and some of them are small issues, some of them are bigger issues, and, and, yeah, 
yeah and some of them are like really bad like those two ejector pin marks on both sides of the cockpit it's like ridiculous it's uh, yeah it shouldn't be there i don't know i don't know how the engineering process works on these things how they decide where the ejector pins go and where where they shouldn't but but uh, yeah deciding that it should be like in the smack dab in the middle of the cockpit wall it's it's just bad engineering it's really bad engineering and they really didn't seem to give any thought to it in 2023 we should really try to hold these manufacturers especially the big ones to higher standards like these i can understand that for example border models being chinese you know chinese engineering work and manufacturing work is probably much cheaper than in europe but still you can see european companies small businesses like uh, das werk being able to produce exceptionally good kits so I can imagine that, for example, German engineering is way ex way more expensive than, for example, Italian one. Well, you know, it's German, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, they should do it better. And I think they can do better. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this matter in the comments. Whether you agree or disagree, I am more than happy to hear about it. But let's continue with some painting, shall we? So, on some reference images, I saw that the back of the fuselage is really just uh, bare metal on the inside. So what I did that I black primed, of course, mission models, black primer as usual. I primed the insides of the fuselage over there and I also primed uh, the guns as those are going to be metal and of course the seat the seat is going to be aluminum as well and i almost forgot to mention the instrument panels and uh, landing gear and flap handles those are going to be black Now after a good amount of drying time, I go over the black primer with some AK Extreme Metal Aluminium or Aluminium for the American viewers. The cockpit seat gets the same treatment, just regular aluminium. The guns, however, are painted with AK Extreme Metals steel. Oh, and by the way, I hope you like this angle when I'm painting because finally I think I have the golden goose. You can see properly the, the plastic being painted, it's not blurring out and my hand is not in the way, so it's a win-win situation. And of course here I Mission model grey prime all the other parts of the fuselage, well the front part of the fuselage because it will get some inner green, internal green, cockpit green color, well the same green as the cockpit. Anyway, you might see some leftover ejector pin marks of course, but I was like meh, it's not going to be visible. I actually tested it, uh, I drive it and then, yeah, they are not visible so. I really didn't give a two cents about them. And of course I'm also priming with grey the cockpit walls and the cockpit frame itself. And as you can see here, well, in terms of airbrushing, it's still not a huge problem having the whole frame together like that. 
but when it comes to hand paint all the small detail here and there that's going to be well not an issue but a really nice exercise in hand and brush coordination again and now here i'm using my own mixture again of the Italian cockpit green uh, which is of course mission models RAF sky gray 70% and 30% Russian emerald green I I really like this minty color that it has and again I don't know how valid this is how how close to you know the real thing is and apparently there were some differences between the shades of these things or like even what kind of color they used um, depending on uh, uh, the manufacturer so like there were differences uh, between these colorings and everything when the plane was built by Breda or it was built by Mackey's factories so yeah it's an interesting topic but i think if you want to keep your sanity you just go along what you think is best and uh, and enjoy it because god knows that us modelers can have a really good debate about what the actual colors were now comes the even more fun part where i hand paint all the small detail within the cockpit frame and first I go through all the bare metal parts with some uh, AK Extreme Metal Steel and yeah at first I was a bit afraid to go right on top uh, uh, this minty green with the metal color because you know they say that you want to have some uh, black primer down first so the metal really pops uh, so I was afraid that this green will give like a greenish tint to the metal, but it wasn't really the case. So I was happy with the result anyway. But you can see it's quite a uh, uh, fiddly, <laughs> yeah, like here going like through through the frame on the bottom just to make sure that I can reach some parts of it. It's um, yeah. That's why I was saying that, uh, that you want to have this frame separate, so you'll make your life easier and not as difficult as I did. Although it's still doable, I still managed to do it, so it shouldn't be a big problem. Luckily, or unluckily I should say, you don't really use too many colors in in this plane's cockpit it's you know it's either gray or this uh, greenish color and then you have some blacks for the handles and whatnot some yeah some bare metal here and there and that's about it really um, I try to mix it up give it a um, tiny bit of uh, brown on some of the levers but yeah, apart from that, it is a very bland cockpit, so to speak. In multiple occasions, I saw these handles, levers on the instrument panel be either be uh, gray or, or metal. I just decided to to paint the middle section part of these levers handles uh, metal and then the sides of them will be uh, light gray here again I go and paint the flap and landing gear handles these are just bare metal as you can see there, there is nothing to them and uh, this is true for the reference images and, of course, the assembly instruction as well.
After all the metal work, I go through the cockpit and paint uh, all the blacks. I use AK's third generation acrylic paint. Another missed opportunity here, they could have made some nice decals to make the cockpit more interesting. Now I'm using some light browns on the rudder pedal leather straps. And again, here is, I think, another useless PE solution for the, uh, uh, for the pilot harness. It just doesn't make any sense to use PE here again. I think these could have been molded really nicely out of plastic. And, and they don't really look good. This part is the top part of the harness and as you can see that has some rivet detail which I guess is, uh, is uh, some kind of metal part that has the harnesses uh, riveted into but yeah but the strap part that's, that's just basically a, a piece of metal there is there is nothing on it there there is no detail well hello there old friend i started to miss you a bit again another ejector pin mark in the worst place imaginable it's literally visible this is the underside of that uh, metal sheet that is behind the pilot's head I presume it serves like an armor plating, but I can imagine that it doesn't really help against late war guns and cannons. But now I use some super glue to glue together the pieces. See, this is the this is the metal sheet I was speaking of. And that has a hole in the middle, well, not in the middle, on the side a bit, um, through which the cable comes out that holds the harness in place and with some super glue again i glue the top part of the harness and the bottom one together Again, it doesn't look really nice now, does it? Because the bottom part has the stitching in and the top part just doesn't have any. Again, that's just a bare metal sheet without any detail of stitching or whatsoever. But on the positive note, you get these nice little buckles. And again, where credit is due, you get three of these so there is one extra if somehow the carpet monster would get hold of one. Well, if you lose two to the carpet monster, you are pretty much screwed and you have to find another way to do it. But you are at, at least are covered for one missing. 
Now here I use AK regular cement, well this really thick one, to glue uh, the back in place. Um, again, this is a bit finicky in a way that there are no guides or anything where to put it, so you just you just put it in the middle where it where it feels right, I guess. Here you can see I base coated with medium blue the two tanks which go next to the pilot seat on the right. Here I used Ocean Grey from Ammo by MIG to paint uh, the tank tops nice and grey as per the instructions. I really don't know what these tanks held. Water or perhaps I don't know, oxygen for the pilot or something or other. Well, if you know, then please let me know in the comments. And here I use my cockpit green to color these frames which hold these uh, tanks in place. I guess these are really an integral part of the cockpit itself. So it's either cockpit green or metal, but I went with my cockpit green just to mix it up. And for the straps, I used AK metal again. These two tanks are going to be the most colorful personalities in the whole cockpit. Too bad you're not going to see too much of them. Before I put down some water-based acrylic paints on this big armor plate, I use Mr. Hobby's metal primer to give a generous coat so that the paint is not going to flake off uh, over time. And to be fair, I did the same thing with most of the metal parts, especially here with, with the metal part of the harness, so the buckles as well. And as you can see, I already glued the bottom part of the harness and that's going to get this metal primer treatment. Here I am gluing the tanks into place. Now I give a bit of a medium brown color for the uh, backrest. After that I give a bit of an edge highlight here with a lighter brown. Next up are the harnesses. Here I use a bit of a like a canvas brown kind of shade to make it uh, pop a bit. And afterwards, when I'm going to use uh, the washers, this will help accentuate uh, the stitching pattern on there.
I should say it is coming together nicely, but I am still not happy how they did the seat belt. But let me know what you think. Now for something completely different. It's time to do the 3D printed tackles. And I should say that this is my first time doing them, so I was afraid. I know that there are two different kinds, like one that you have to put it into water as a regular decal to have it um, come off from the paper backing. And then there is the other, I think, Red Fox Studios, which does it, which is just like basically like a, like a, what you call it like a sticker or something so you can take it off from the backing paper quite easily these ones are the first ones so you use water to get them off and then you use some PA glue sorry PVA glue to put them in place so you don't use any decal softener or anything or at least according to the instructions that I saw on these kind of decals. Funnily enough, Italeri doesn't give you any instructions how to put them on, so... I show you here how I did it with uh, Revels PVA glue, the contact the clear, and yeah, it worked pretty fine and they stay in place. Uh, don't forget to use some cotton bud to massage it down a bit and get rid of the excess moisture which is going to be pushed from underneath. Also, you don't have to use warm water, regular water is just fine. And uh, don't be afraid, they are quite resilient. They are not going to tear easily or something like a regular deco would do. Now we arrived at the place which is the example of why you don't want to put those levers on beforehand and especially the targeting side. As you can see it's quite finicky to put this middle section in there. So it is going to bend a bit and stuff like that but again don't, don't be afraid it's not going to tear it. It's like hmm, I don't know the consistency is like a soft plasticky kind of feels. It's okay to massage it a bit, you know, bend it here and there. Don't bend it or don't pull it too much because then, uh, um, then the decal, the detail is going to be distorted like, uh, like these in instruments are, <laughs> aren't going to be um, nice and uh, circular afterwards. Yeah, you need some care, but not that much. And here, as well, you can see that I had to go and cut out a tiny amount uh, from the bottom there because it was in the way and I just couldn't wedge the decal underneath. I went in with a very fresh blade. I can do a precision cut and get rid of that tiny amount of plastic that was in the way. Afterwards, it just went in nice. Like, yeah, th there we go. That's much better. And uh, well, the rest of it, those two sides of the main instrument panel, those went on pretty fine. There weren't any problems at all. Again, I used the uh, Revels Contacta Clear, PVA glue, and yeah, and it held it in place. So overall, I am satisfied with the experience, but again, Italeri, come on, man. If you're going to put these figs into it, you should give us the instructions what to use and how. Like, like, come on, so many balls dropped in this kit that it is getting ridiculous at this point. And we have arrived at my least favorite part. But now, instead of enamels, I use Windsor & Newton oil paints. It's a roughly 50-50 mix of black and burnt umber, just to give it like a, 
a bit of brownish tint for the black and of course I used Windsor & Newton's own turpentine to thin the paint up real nice. I don't have exact ratios, I am really just eyeballing it so to speak and uh, yeah and then I just went to town on the whole thing. Now the beauty of oil paints are that they take a long 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 time to cure which means that you can work nice and slow not running not caring about if you make a mistake because you know that you will have all the time to go back and uh, and clean it up at some point of course don't wait forever i would say depending how thin the paint is it might take like one or two days tops to have the paint cured and afterwards it's going to be really hard to get it moving again of course yes you want to work in within a one day time frame but again that's way more than what you would get with the enamels on the downside of course this means that you can't really work on the project as fast as you'd like because you're waiting for the paint to dry and another negative aspect would be that it can be very finicky and tricky to move the paint around and it can take up quite a lot of time to get the hang of it but as soon as you get the feel you know and you know how to handle the paint how to make it flow into certain directions and to behave the way you want it can be quite relaxing and an enjoyable ride again i'm just going to do like a rough wash on the recesses and on the detail and afterwards i will come in with a with a clean brush and some clean turpentine and get rid of the excess paint and here it is with a clean brush and some turpentine and i should really emphasize on how little turpentine you need just a tiny tiny whiff of turpentine is enough to have the paint moving again and, and as you can see it can be finicky it can be tricky in the, in the way that the paint sometimes doesn't want to move in the direction as you'd like and sometimes you leave a, a, a tiny speck after you lift the brush but but as you get the hang of it it is going to be okay trust me on this one and I haven't really said why I went with oil paints this time rather than uh, the usual suspect enamel ones. Uh, it is because I didn't want to, to slobber it on as with my previous builds. I wanted to have and uh, retain this kind of relatively cleanish green, minty green look but uh, still have some wash, some shading made by uh, the wash itself on the paint. And I knew that if I use oil paint, it's going to be much easier to, yeah, to clean off the excess and make sure that there is less staining as with uh, the enamels. Oh, and by the way, I haven't said in the beginning, but of course I did use uh, a satin varnish before I did this wash and of course the satin varnish is not mission models now as I said in my previous video I found that uh, VMS varnishes are really good as well so this is VMS satin varnish that you see on it Here as well, you can see me that I've uh, managed to put down a bit too much of uh, paint, but then I've unloaded the brush into a napkin and went back and just picked up quite easily the excess. And I think 
you can't really do these things with uh, with the enamel planes. They can they can eat themselves onto the surface quite fast. Whilst these oil paints are like really easy to work with. Now I did some wash here on this back frame although this part is not going to be visible at all because i'm going to glue the armor plate on top and there is not much of a gap between the two to actually see anything Here is another example why you don't want to have these frames uh, put together right away because it is quite hard to get a reach into these gaps on the floor and uh, it's one thing to be able to put some paint in it but when you want to get rid of the excess uh, now that's going to be very harder as you can see i was a bit generous so I would have liked to get most of it out, but uh, yeah, in the end I just went, well, I managed to model myself into this corner. I might as well just stay in there then. And of course I'm here a bit more generous with the staining and the washing because well this is the cockpit floor where the pilots with their dirty boots are going to be seated and like all the dirt and uh, dust will accumulate with the holes and together and now i go to do the wash on the armor plate here just to accentuate the detail and then I am going to give some extra staining to the panel, to the armor plate itself. And as I said before, just take your time, move the paint around as much as you like, take away or add to it, it's perfectly fine. You have all the time in the world, so you don't have to run, you don't have to be fast, just enjoy the ride. And even if it's sometimes a bit annoying, that it doesn't behave as you thought it's going to be, it's okay. Remember, you can clean this off if you want to. And here I really just want to give it a bit of a shade, like a bit of a, a dirtied up look. Now here are all the dirty up parts of the cockpit and well, you can see that there are still some some paints uh, pooling up here and there but we should take care of them right about now.
And here is the cockpit flooring, all cleaned up and ready to go. Now finally we have arrived at the final stretch. Let's assemble some things. And first we put in the instrument panels. And again, here, Captain Hindsight, it would have been much easier to have that uh, frontal frame separate from the cockpit floor. It would have been much easier to put the instrument panels on. But it's, again, it's a common saying for me now, it's not the end of the world. You can do it like this if you want to. The top instrument panel was a bit fiddly as well. Not as bad as the bottom one, I guess, but it could have been better in terms of uh, how it fits onto the frame. All done and it's looking quite good. I am pleased with the result. Next, using AK cement, I am gluing the seat into place. And again, this is another place where there are no locator pins properly, so could potentially misalign the seat in a way that it's not perfectly center and of course you can see me struggle a bit because I assembled everything too much at this point but in the end stubbornness prevails I guess and here I'm going to glue in the armor plating I should have said that you want to make sure that when you put together the seat belts, the harnesses, that you are bending that top PE part of the harness. Oops, almost used the wrong glue there. You want to use Tammy Extra Fin, my boy. There you go. Good boy. So where was I? Yeah, so when you bend that PE harness, you want to bend it forwards and not backwards because as you can see it needs to be in front of that plating now let's do some extra dirtying of the floor with the light sienna brown from vallejo pigments and as you can see i didn't go to town too much with this just a tiny amount on those plates underneath the rudders and a tiny amount in these in these recesses of the flooring and don't be worried about if it looks a bit dark uh, at the beginning as it will dry it will lighten up of course and it will have the same color as the pigment powder itself And woohoo, it's assembly time. First, let's put in the left cockpit panel. It goes in pretty well. I don't have any complaints right here, but <laughs> let's not be carried away. We are talking about Italy, and there is going to be one part that's going to be annoying. And I think it's going to be a good Mr. Hindsight time. And there you have it, those two nubbins need to go because they are just in the way to put in the right cockpit wall. Now whatever the purpose was of those two, well, they probably didn't do a good job fulfilling that purpose. Except if the purpose is to annoy me, because then they were like A+. Also, you might have noticed that wire coming out from the armor plate right down to the top of the harness. That is per instruction and it's going to be painted black later on. Thank you. 
And there you have it. It is finally done. Oh man, this was a long ride in making it, <laughs> recording it, and of course doing the voiceover right now. And sorry if it's uh, quite a long video, but I really didn't want to skip on any detail. I hope you will appreciate this extra effort from me in probably in a nice comment and some likes. And of course, if you can watch the video from beginning till the end, that would make my day the most. So thank you very much for sticking around until this very end. And the third video is going to be about assembling the whole shebang and painting it. Um, I can tell you right now that it is going to be something as well. My view on this on this plane, on what it already produced, hasn't changed a bit. It's a decent kit uh, for 40 euros and not for 100, as I usually said. But I don't know if if any of you have started it or not, or bought it or not. Let me know in the comments, of course, again, if you have different opinions or you agree. I am more than happy to discuss uh, these things in detail with you guys. And again, thank you very much to be here, to watch and uh, to like and subscribe. And see you on the next one. Bye bye.